This is BC Spruch, your look at the province's burgeoning distilling culture. Welcome to another episode of BC Spirits. Of course, I'm your host, Sean Sewell. This week, I'm not going to lie to you, everybody. It is getting very, very difficult to be putting together episodes in this time of COVID-19, uh, just with online stores coming on board and online shopping for distilleries and a few other things. Um, I'm getting a little tight. So I did a quick run. I went to a couple of different liquor stores today, picked up some stuff. Uh, I had a few things sent to me, which is fantastic. I always love support like that. Um, four brand new whiskeys, and I know how much you love my whiskey episodes. Four brand new whiskeys that I haven't tried. I haven't even, I've just cracked them. So what I want to sh show you guys is that um, I don't pre-taste. I don't come up with some preconceived notions. I've never tasted all four of these, which I'm really, really excited about tasting. Um, so let's kick it off. Single malts in BC have become quite good. Like, very good. Um, bit by bit by bit, we're putting out some great uh, single malts, putting out some great Canadian-style whiskeys, some weird grain whiskeys, um, some more traditional-style but Canadiana-style whiskeys like bourbon and, and rye. But we're really starting to dial it in. Now, the cool thing today with these ones is that I've got... Um, a Blenders edition from Odd Society. So this is the Blenders release from Odd Society. Now they, I can't remember, I should have done some research before I did this episode. I never fucking do, do I still? Um, they had a famous blender that uh, Gord had worked with in the UK. Um, Gord, if you're watching, can you comment down below? In the UK, come and do a seminar. Just before this, this COVID thing hit, I couldn't make it. I was invited and I really wish I had. Um, and so they did a blend, single malt, um from all the barrels they have. So I'm really looking forward to this one. This one's gonna be fantastic. Next up, we've got two from Liberty, which we're gonna explore single malt whiskeys finished in um, barrel age cast. Now I've done barrel age finished whiskeys before. You can go back and look at the episodes. And then a, the big bad boy one here. This is the Divine Ancient Grains Strath Exclusive Cast Strength Bad Boy. Look at the fucking color on that, Jesus Christ. And this is one of the weird ones. This is the ones that um, we're talking about barley spelt ema, Coruscant and Icon, all uh, old school grains that are grown here on the island and they make this little bad boy out of it. But I'm really looking forward to uh, the car strength um, Strath exclusive. Now there is a couple of Strath exclusives I want to get my hands on, but I really wasn't up for dropping 400 bucks on uh, a couple of bottles today. And my wife wouldn't have been very happy with that either. So <coughs> let's kick it off. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, the whiskey program at Odd Society has gone leaps and bounds from the very first barrels that I tasted back in the day. Uh, really come a long way. Their, their Prospector, their Commodore, uh, the Maple Smoke we tasted during uh, Smoky Whiskeys a little while ago. Um, just on top, on top, on top. Gord has just dialed this shit in hard. Um, oh, on the nose... Now, I've talked about it. I'm probably going to probably talk about it again through this, this tasting. Um, we're not going to have region-specific um, flavor profiles the way that Scotland does. We're going to have distillery-specific. So you're going to taste whiskey that tastes, has a sort of strain all the way through this ribbon of flavor profile all through their whiskeys that is going to be distinctly their style. Shelter Point has it. Okanagan Spirits has it. Anyone who's doing a couple of whiskeys, we can taste a multitude. Lowen McKinnon has it. They have that bright, citrusy, hoppy sort of thing going on. Okay. 46%, 100% uh, BC grown malted barley blended. This is giving some really good depth. Um, I find uh, Odd Society is very youthful, very bright, very poppy on the on the palate. This has got some really good dark, deep tones. I've tasted some Commodores that are a car strength and single barrel. I can see where this flavor profile is coming from. This is a really, really good expression of Odd Society's single malt pro program. They don't release too many. You have to snap it up because it did get snapped up so quickly. I really can start seeing where that Odd Society direction is going. That space side Highland style but really mouth-filling, definitely BC, fantastic whiskey. You gain everything from, there's a little bit of a deep sort of like stewed fruit sort of flavor there, but it's very, very subtle. You gain the bright barley, and then you gain this wonderful rounded oak, and the oak is not over um, punchy, which I'm starting to see a lot in North American whiskeys. Um, not so much the big bourbons, or, but single malts coming out of North America have that sort of matchsticky, over-extracted wood. 
this is nice mellow takes the edge off really nicely uh wood so that's the uh the brand new blenders reserve from monster side that's a nice little bad boy to get started so next up we have liberty silly they're ba based on granville island um lisa simpson runs the joint she, amazing amazing female entrepreneur distiller learnt the craft so that she knew exactly what was going on in the distillery that's a fantastic job these are actually a couple of years old i wonder if there's a date on these ones i don't think there is but uh I don't think there's a date on this one from when it was done, but I know these are a couple of years old. They've been uh, at Vessel for a bit, but fantastic expressions of single molds finished in uh, casks. So this one's finished in burgundy. So I think it's, I believe it's a couple of years in American oak and then finished in burgundy cask. And you know how much I love my wine casks. So let's kick off the burgundy one. I've got burgundy and Madeira. I think burgundy is going to maybe be a little bit lighter. Yeah, you're getting that definitely that funky that funky red wine wood. It's crazy. Ooh, single malt has a sort of like crazy honeysuckle. I'm looking forward to the next one. See if that honeysuckle is something that's in the single malt. I've done a lot of their whiskeys here and there, but it's usually at tastings, and tastings are always fantastic and great. But you always end up tasting way too much, and you you lose your notes, and you forget about stuff. There is a very distinct, very, very heavy malted barley, but there's this sort of bright honeysuckle. And then you get, and then you get the sweet orange, and then you get that, that, that funky red fruit from the burgundy cast. Light wood, nothing too crazy, but you definitely get that sort of mouthfeel. I think this one, little bad boy's a little bit underrated. Yeah, I think this one's a little bit underrated. So let's kick it off with the Madeira cast. Now, Madeira is another fortified wine. I'm going to be interested in this one because Madeira, Sherry not so much, but Madeira casks they get used quite a lot um, for a long period of time. So you can imagine using a tea bag for a really long period of time, how much flavor is going to get back you. So you're going to get definitely liquid Madeira flavor profile back. Should be a sweeter, almost desserty wine. Ooh, there's that there's that that heavy barley with the the bright honeysuckle. I, I I'm getting this sort of honeysuckle honeycomb. So obviously that's a single malt. The barley's there and it's like it's very mouth filling. You can almost it's very husky. It's very very barley forward. I know that sounds illegal. What does your wine taste like? My wine tastes like grapes. <laughs> um, the Madeira on the other hand is very very not pulled back, but it's a very sh like a very straight focused pull of Madeira flavor profile, that sort of fortified old wine that you would drink after dessert. It doesn't overpower the single malt. It's very subtle, but it's still very twangy as well. Like it's still got some like good thing. Both have great acidity, good the good mouthfeel. Both are sitting about 42, 42%, slightly higher proof. I think that really works for the whiskey. Um, obviously there's a little bit more color for the, the burgundy. Yeah, the Madeira, the Madeira is coming through on that fine, that that finish nose when you finish your glass off. Same thing with the, same thing with the uh, the Burgundy cask. You're definitely getting what Liberty Single Malt is really about. That that husky single malt, uh, sorry, that husky barley, that honeysuckle, that honeycomb feel that you get in that the back palate, and then you get the the barrel finishes come through in the back palate and you definitely get this different twang of flavor profile. So the burgundy again, this sort of funky red fruit, a little bit of oak. Um, the Madeira has got that sort of dessert wine, not dessert wine, dessert port sort of feel to it. Um, I'd like to, I'd be curious what sort of Madeira it is, whether it's a rainwater or it's a bit deeper and a bit more like Solera style, but both great expressions from Liberty. I don't think I've ever done these before at home in an episode. I think this is the very first time. Very, very noticeable. I, I, I think the distillery's been around long enough. It's been around for 10 years now. I think every distillery that puts out whiskey is always putting a, 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 a pro and con because people are always scared about doing BC whiskey. And, and I know, I think it's silly. But the thing is, everybody progresses their game better and better and better. And I think these are great expressions. I actually would love to get some brand new, like this year expressions and taste these side by side and see how it's progressed. Next up, 
this one I've been looking forward to because, <clears throat> you know, like I, I've got a great relationship with Brad and Ken and, and Kev over at, at Divine. Um, and I cut, ooh, 15 of 63. Okay, that's probably why I didn't get a bottle of this. I was I was trying to hit them up pretty hard to get a bottle of this. The, uh, whoop, let's get on the camera. Ancient Grains, Strath exclusive, car strength. Fantastic whiskey. Uh, the Ancient Grains is great. Weird, crazy, wins a bunch of awards. Uh, the classic is fantastic in the way that it is uh, this expression of weird grains and how it can work and what whiskey could have tasted like if we just didn't lean into barley straight away. So, fucking 16 of, 15 of 63. That's incredible. I'm so happy that I got a bottle of this. This is cast number two. Amazing. It's kind of, a, it's kind of, I'm very blown away straight away with the, the nose is still very bright citrus um, floral tones coming through. Wow, that's 57%. Kicks you in the teeth really heavy. But wow, what a mouth filler. Okay, so one thing I love about this one is, again, never taste it. So the one, uh, one thing I love about this is um, it's, it reminds me a little bit of how barrels and barrel aged gin can play together. You can either have an over, over aged gin and you just lose all the botanicals, or you have this beautiful balance between barrel aging and the botanicals and they sort of play together and the, and the barrel almost comes becomes a flavor profile unto itself in the botanical range very floral and hot this is one of them the barrel comes through fantastically in um oh how would you explain it it's it's a little bit it's a little bit matchsticky but not in a bad way it's extracted but it it works with this the the grains as well the grains are husky and and raw and it plays really nicely and each one you can taste get, like you can tell gives a slightly different flavor profile slightly different ping of flavor onto the whiskey in the in the final palate so i can understand why this bad boy is uh, a strath exclusive yeah candied fruit macadamia nuts spicy notes christmas spice fantastic mouthfeel the barrels in there is a spice as well which is a, I, after tasting as many barrel aged gins as I have, I can understand how that works. It comes in as a spice. It, it mellows, but also adds at the same time. What a fantastic selection. I am blown away and so happy with uh, tasting these completely brand new. I'm so happy right now. So let's recap. Blender's release from Odd Society. If you haven't got a bottle, email and get a bottle. It is needed. Liberty, I know they, they have a great online store. Go pick up a couple of bottles if you want to try out and play around. They've also got some other greats. Their, their Trust Whiskey line is fantastic. They've got a bourbon. They've got a single grain. They've got an Irish style. Like, it is fantastic. Like, they do a fantastic amount of different whiskeys, and they sort of pioneered that category of, like, doing all these different categories. And then pop down to the Strath or go into their online store. Pick up a bottle of the Ancient Grains. You will not be disappointed. If you love the Ancient Grains as much as I do, it's an expression of Vancouver Island, Ancient style, well, ancient grains, obviously, duh. Um, but um, pick up a bottle so that you can uh, have it in your collection. Only 63 bottles made. That's a collection. That's a collectible item right there. So go get in and get signed. So, whew, four new whiskeys. I hope you're enjoying Spirit of the Day. I'm doing that every single day. Um, I've got uh, one thing I, I want to shout out before I finish up the episode. Um, I'm going to have some book uh, giveaways in the next little while. I'm just working on that. Um, go over to BC Spirit Swag Store. Don't buy my swag. Buy the Mad Lab. If you love Mad Laboratory, Scotty Thompson and the guys from Mad Lab, um, I'm doing a distillery series worth of shirts. Um, all the profits go to the distillery. So I'm hoping to get a couple more distilleries on board. Um, I just want to help out a distillery as much as possible. I'm hoping that doing tastings like this help them as much as possible possible. I want to thank you all for your support. I'm completely and utterly grateful for everything. Um, thanks very much. Hope you enjoy Spirit of the Day. I have a lot of fun waking up at 9, 30, 10 o'clock and well, waking up early, but then doing it at 9, 30, 10 o'clock every single day, which is probably going to become a mainstream thing. I'll probably be doing that every day forever now because that's the kind of human being that I am. But hope you enjoy the episode, guys. See you next week or see you tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.